Hey YouTube, welcome back. Um, now, as you know, the printing I do is on a FlashForge Finder, um, and unfortunately, you have to use their proprietary, proprietary software, FlashPrint. However, I just took an update for it this, uh, in fact, well, several hours ago in the morning. Um, but let's see if we can see what it's called now, what version. So, uh, version 3.13, and there's definitely a few good updates here. So, I've chosen FlashForge Finder, and as you can see, the parameters, uh, the size is at four mine, so it's quite a small square. But one thing you can see automatically is the cut uh, option here. So before it was just view, move, rotate, scale, but now we have the cut option, which is quite a big deal. Um, so if I just load a quick STL, um, so let's just open uh, the lion. So here we are. So here's the uh, lion print. I've actually printed this off before. Um, it was on the my uh, printer when I bought it. I didn't actually know what it was, uh, but I've since found this on Thingiverse. Um, but so here we go. So if I click, um, so all the usual things work. If you select the model. Uh, you can move it or just drag it around yourself, and you can see the um, the figures change in there. Uh, rotate. One thing I've noticed on rotate, which actually I think is really a good positive difference, is that. The axes here um, are much thicker, much bolder colours. So before they were really thin. Sometimes you you didn't actually know where you were looking, like whether it was the X or the Y. Uh, but now much much bigger, easier to grab. And as you go along, it tells you the exact degrees from where you started to where you are now. So that's actually a really good bonus. Also, um, the only thing I would say is well, they've got Z, Y, X here. Maybe when they bring up the parameters, they should change that. Although, I guess, yeah, maybe the wire should match this way. Then again, I guess you'll change it that way. Oh, well, we'll see. Uh, so, scale um, is just the same. You know, you can change it altogether. Uniform scaling. Um, turn that off and change just the Z. Make it a little fatty, stubby lion. Um, so, that hasn't changed at all there. Um, but cut. So, here we are. So, if I uh, so you can draw with the mouse or you can use the plane. So if I want to draw with the mouse, I can let's say uh, if I just do that, and then if I come around here, you can see it's cut exactly where I wanted it to. Um, see if we can move this. Yep, you can actually move it. So it's got the exact the plane is fixed, but now we can move it according to where. It was facing, so I can cut off just the nose if I want to. Um, it's great. Um, so I haven't actually cut something yet. So tell you what, if we um, so let's get rid of this one. Let's delete that cut. Oh, hang on. Reload him. Um, let's get cut. You have to click it. To, you have to click it to select it, and then you have to click it again to bring up there. So let's cut off the head here. Like that, just underneath the mane. So as you can see, it's like it's one of those collars so he can't scratch himself. So if we start cut, ah, uh, there we go. So it has perfectly cut it off. So that means if you have an STL, or uh, it's quite a difficult file, quite intricate, you can bring it in here now. Um, if it's too big usually to fit, especially with a flash force finder, you're going to have to cut up a lot of models to get anything decently sized out of it. Now you can do a quick cut. And then select the one that's left over. If we say move, place on platform, and there we go. Placed on platform. Um, all we'd have to do is rotate that so that the flat bit sticks on there. But not too bad at all. So let's have a look. If we, oh, we can do that. And then turn that way. So it looks like it would do a little bit of fiddling. What I would like to see is if you could just choose the best place to put it on the platform. So uh, we've got like that there, but as you can see, it's going to take a little bit of messing around to actually get that flat on the platform. But if you could choose a, uh, if there was an option where you could just have the flattest side to go against the print bed, I feel like that would be a lot better. But anyway, that's not bad at all for starting to uh, to simply cut through things. Good little addition there. So now let's um, let's tell it. Let's get rid of the body. We'll just put the head here, 
and um, in fact yep okay yep no, let's leave that so let's so it's on the platform okay so it's going to be a little bit off right now but let's uh, let's go to print and look at the uh, diff oh I tell you what actually before we go so supports have changed now as well so if we go to support options um, now when we had tree like we just had tree like or linear so linear are just columns uh, tree like is like say kind of branching climber plant um, and now you can choose the base height the base diameter the post diameter uh, the overhang threshold is, is great so uh, let's just choose that for example um, has it put those in oh here we go so we chose the ones uh, no that's click auto and see what it comes up with here we are so now you can see that it's created a thicker bit there going up so we could have that thinner if you wanted um, so I'll tell you what let's delete that one. Oh wait. Um, oh, that's just a print finishing on the flash forge. So let's do the base diameter of 10 millimeters and see what that goes like. And auto sports. Yep. Let that load. And there we go. So now we've got a bigger base here. Just because I've had it before when I've used the linear ones where they just aren't strong enough, aren't fixed well enough to the uh, the bed. And then as soon as you get something higher, this falls over. Whoever was going to print it here mics up um, becomes a bit of a ordeal. So I'm really happy with that. Um, so I've got to clear supports though. And let's just check if... Oh, wrong one. And a sec. Clear. Let's just see if anything has changed with the linear options. Uh, so ah, so you can choose the pillar size as well. Ah, that's not bad also. So how high does that go up to? Uh, so that goes pretty thick as well. So let's do OK. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, so we can do big chunky supports like that. Um, and because they're chunky, they'll go out there. So, you, in fact, you could probably choose these instead of a raft, which wouldn't be too bad actually. Might have to try that sometime. Um, but yeah, that's not bad at all. So, in fact, if you didn't want to do a whole raft, what you could do is just delete certain pillars like this. Um, so, for example, you could have the, if the model was slightly off the bed, Put in these thick supports like that, and then delete the ones you don't want, and you're left with the kind of half support, half not. Um, could be a much better option if you didn't want a whole raft. So I uh, quite like that idea. Okay, so let's come back out of this. Uh, don't want to have the supports. Nope. Um, oh god, I think I've already got them. Hang on a sec. Uh, clear supports. There we go. Now let's go back. So now if we go to print print okay so usually before one thing that always used to annoy me the raft was always enabled now it's disabled as standard default so that makes it actually a big difference the amount of times I've forgotten to disable that um, supports are always enabled so um, if you don't want them disable them but they won't print unless you chose them previously um, it's got the same low standard high hyper wall vast mode vars mode sorry um, but in more options so automatically it goes and if you go up and down it's every point zero one millimeter now when before it used to uh, I think it was point 0.1 straight to point 0.15, point 0.2 something like that um, not much of a big difference to be fair um, but just has changed slightly the shells is the same that won't change the infill here is a change so we had lion hexagon before the honeycomb pattern but now we also have triangle and if we hang the cursor over here it says determines the infill pattern for the inferior, in, sorry, interior of model. Hexagon infill is with the highest strength, while line infill is with the shortest print time. Triangle infill takes slightly more time than line infill, but with more cohesiveness between layers. So it's kind of an in-between um, one to try, which I haven't printed with yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it and seeing how it comes out. Um, and also what we have now is this. So you can, in fact, if we change the layer to point 0.1, I believe, that will change this as well so let's do that go back to infill and now so if I put the cursor over here it explains what it does so the option um, combines infill and sp um, combine allows to combine infill and speed up your print by extruding thicker infill paths if layer height is larger than 0.1 millimeters 
every n layers is suggested otherwise every n inner layers is suggested now i'm not still not too sure what this actually means does it just mean that when it does the infill it i'm not sure would it um do a couple of layers of infill um so you don't have to do it every layer if you see what i mean um so if you're printing at 0.1 millimeter could you every uh two inner layers would it print a 0.2 millimeter thickness on it? So then you wouldn't have to do the infill every layer. So that's something I'll have to mess around with and determine how it goes. But I like that they're adding options like this, especially to make the print quicker. Um, so speed uh, is the same as print speed and travel speed. Temperature the same. And here we do have others. And this is one I'm very excited about is where we can pause at heights now. So with the flash wheel fine job, there is actually a pause button which you will bring the nozzle right up to the um, homing positions, um, bring the bed a little bit down, and then what you can do is um, put a different filament in if you want. So if you're printing with white, you can then put, sorry, then uh, put black filament in. It will extrude through until it's running nicely, and then you press play again, and it will go back to the position it was just at. Now there's always going to be a little artifact there where it's changed filament and it's come back into it, but overall it's, it's not, not too bad at all. Um, but here what we can do is edit and then we can add a pulse height so you can add it at certain millimeters like this so we can add a pulse height at 10 millimeters um, and then what we've got remove pulse height um, and then add another one ah, so it looks like it's only one we can do so remove 10 millimeter remove pulse height um, okay so it's only one we can do that's a bit disappointing uh, let's try. Okay, I was hoping that we'd be able to um, add a couple different pulse heights on there, but it looks like we can only do one. So, if you did want it to stop automatically, so you can change your filament when it gets to a set height, it looks like it's only going to do that once. And then, if you wanted to do it again, you're going to have to actually monitor it and press pause at the right time. But it's still uh, a lot better than we had the option before. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, overall uh, impressed with that. Um, one more thing to show. So, um, I'll tell you what, let's um, put the infill as triangle, uh, let's put 20% so we can see what it looks like, and we'll also do, um, so what did this say, um, if layer height is larger than 0.1mm, every N layers is suggested, otherwise every N inner layers is suggested. So, let's do 0.2, and this said to do every... Uh, so if layer height is larger than every n layer, so let's do every uh, two layers and see what happens with this. So uh, I'm going to click OK now. Uh, let's just save it as Lion Test in G code. Um, I'll save it as a .g save. Uh, and you see down here, it's just slicing it now. I'm not sure if that's sped up or not, but I feel like it has actually sped up slightly as well, which um, is always a big bonus. Um, and then here, so before, if you have the finder, it used to extrude a path just to uh, purge the nozzle here, and then it would come over here and start the print. Now we don't have that. Now what we actually have, uh -huh. um, although this has not done it very well, to be fair, um, it does it usually, well, it should do it, does it around the actual print and then prints the head um, and uh, as you can see because it's not actually if I get it to here it's only touching the bed there so it's actually printed around where it actually touches the bed um, if we had a print that was on the ground it would do it around it and then start printing so it is better because it's hard to see from this angle I haven't chosen the best print but it means that it's purging the nozzle a lot closer so it doesn't have to travel 50 millimeters or something, which then more uh, filament comes out and uh, it's a messier start. So uh, I'm definitely liking that option also. Um, now let's have a look at this head and look at the triangular infill. So if we come down, okay, there we are. Okay, it's interesting to see. So I quite like this triangular one. And can we see what it was? talking about with the uh, every other infill. Um, I'd love if we had some type of preview of the nozzle. Um, so here we are. So it looks like, it, ah there we go, so it does one perimeter layer, 
one uh, infill, one perimeter, one infill. Uh, so it's doing like that. So there's nothing too different there. Um, I'm sure there is a difference I'm not quite understanding there, but uh, definitely will take some investigating and see uh, what is happening. But yeah, anyway, so that just shows a few of the uh, changes in flash print. Um, I'm looking forward to using those now. Um, so yeah, if you've uh, got any questions or gotten, if you've used this new software, let me know what you think of it and how it's going for you. Uh, so thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to check out my video with my robotic hand. Um, just printing some stuff for that now, which just finished. Printing my own bolts to go in the joints. Um, I'm going to test out how strong they are because I don't think they're the strongest, but it depends on the surface area that's got the pressure on them at the moment. So, see you for now in the next one. Bye.